While we rarely skip an opportunity to praise the Volkswagen Golf, our infatuation has never fixated on the hatchback's price. That's because while its cost is reasonable, its core competencies, a solid structure, an impeccably finished interior, and comfortable and capable suspension, would be welcome at any price. And value is just one of the main criteria we use to name cars to our 10 best cars list, the others being satisfying driving dynamics and unparalleled execution of purpose. Because the Golf excels at all three, it has been named a 10 best winner for a decade running. Even so, we recognize that a vast swath of buyers shop primarily on value. Those shoppers will be pleased by the tweaks VW has made to the Golf lineup for 2017, the last model year before a facelifted edition arrives. The base price is effectively lower than it was last year, and the number of trim levels has been reduced from 4 to just 2, albeit each with more standard features than before. In other golf news, the two-door body style has been axed, and by now you're probably aware of what happened to the diesel engine option. The payoff. Volkswagen's adjustments leave the Golf lineup with only the base S and the now top-of-the-line Wolfsburg Edition models, both four doors with either a five-speed manual transmission or a six-speed automatic paired with a gasoline-fed turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Other Golf-based derivatives continue, including the longer Sport Wagon, the semi-rugged Altrac, the sporty GDI, and the even sportier all-wheel drive Golf R. Beyond allowing Volkswagen to save a buck or two printing shorter sales brochures, the changes also dramatically narrow the Golf's pricing envelope. Previously, the basic Golf range spanned nearly $9,000, from the $19,315 two-door Golf to the four-door $28,245 Golf cell. For 2017, just $2,800 separates the least and most expensive Golfs. The 17 Golf S starts at $20,715, or $280 cheaper than last year's base four-door Golf. And it includes more standard equipment, such as a leather-wrapped steering wheel and a more modern 6.5-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. It is the $22,415 Wolfsburg edition tested here, however, that best represents Volkswagen's value-added strategy for 2017. It comes with a sunroof, rain-sensing windshield wipers, automatic headlights, heated front seats, proximity key entry, blind spot monitoring, forward collision warning with automated emergency braking, and full leather seating surfaces. The only option besides paint and upholstery colors is the six-speed automatic transmission, $1,100, which our test car had in place of the standard five-speed manual. A similarly equipped 2016 Golf would have cost at least $27,540, but what really drives home Volkswagen's more aggressive pricing is that this Wolfsburg is stocked nearly as fully as our $28,810. 2015 Golf Cell Long Term Test Car. That car had 18 inch wheels, navigation, and dual zone automatic climate control that this one lacks, omissions that are more or less offset in the value equation by the aforementioned blind spot monitoring, forward collision warning, and automated braking. Previous Golfs aren't the only cars undercut by the 17 Golf, the Wolfsburg Edition in particular, compares favorably with the prices for similarly equipped hatchbacks such as the Mazda 3, Ford Focus, and Chevrolet Cruze. New price, same performance. Its lighter price tag has no effect at the test track, of course. The turbocharged 1.8-liter four-cylinder still makes 170 horsepower and 199 pounds to foot of torque, and the six-speed automatic transmission's ratios are unchanged. The Wolfsburg model tested here reached 60 miles per hour in 7.3 seconds and stopped from 70 miles per hour in 168 feet. Those figures are a shade better than those laid down by our 2015 long-term test car when new. This Wolfsburg 0.84 Grand Skidpad grip figure trails at cars, due to its less great tires on 16-inch wheels in place of the older model's 18-inch rubber. 
Objective performance makes up only a small part of our appreciation for the golf, though. Subjective matters like the way the suspension soaks up road aberrations while keeping the body flat and controlled through corners, the impeccably assembled cabin, and the boxy hatchback body's incredibly practical cargo hauling ability draw us to the VW again and again. That said, a few on our staff disparage the square corner shape, which has barely changed for decades. We're happy to report that VW has addressed a few shortcomings we noted in our previous 40,000-mile test. The 6.5-inch touchscreen, new for the 2016 model year, is much quicker to respond than the 5.8-inch unit in our long-term Golf and exhibited no untoward or buggy behavior. The graphics on both the touchscreen and the gauge cluster information display still could use an injection of pixels for a sharper, more modern look, but function over form wins the day here. The 6-speed automatic performed more smoothly than the same transmission in our long-term Golf, with fewer low-speed gear selection hiccups, even if it remains the least fully realized piece in the otherwise flawless Golf's puzzle. Next year's facelifted model, already on sale in Europe, will bring an even nicer dashboard display and minor styling updates. Predictably, taking an already good car such as the Golf and pumping up its value quotient only makes it more appealing, and we're happy that Volkswagen found a way to do so without stripping away the car's excellence. This approach is having a positive effect. VW applied similar price adjustments to the Passat and Jetta sedans, and sales of these three models during 2016 were down between 6 and 8 percent compared with 2015. Considering that diesels once made up nearly a quarter of all VW sales in the US, it's impressive that such a clot could be applied to the bleeding in the wake of the emissions cheating scandal. We hope that means we'll have golfs to enjoy for many years to come.